Welcome to an old cowboy talking about Jesus. I'm so glad that you're here this morning. We're going to talk about 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17 and 18. It says, Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit is of the Lord, there is absolute liberty. Then it says, We beholding, as we look before ourselves in a mirror, we go from glory to glory in the Lord our Father, who has brought this to, to us children. So we're standing here thinking about what is an old cowboy talking about Jesus? Well, the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, he says, now, There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For we don't walk after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, in the verse 2, it says that we have been set free from the law of sin and death through the law of liberty in the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So when you and I began to realize that we need to walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh, the flesh is the dictates of what our mind, will, and emotions is doing. So you and I have been transformed from a fleshly, carnal, earthly person into a spiritual person. Like God is a spirit, and we must worship Him as such. So when we worship God in spirit and truth, which is the Holy Spirit and Jesus is the truth, then we know that we know that we're doing exactly what we're supposed to do. So the presence of the Lord is upon you and me. If you continue to read, go back and read 2 Corinthians chapter 3, one of the amazing things there, Paul is talking about every time Moses is read or the law and the prophets is read, the veil falls down over the people's face. What that does is put us, every person, back up under the law that thou shall not. Well, you and I are incapable of living and keeping those laws. Now, the law was given to man to bring man to the realization that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But the thing that God is interested in is the freedom and the liberty that you have in the Holy Spirit and through the, the death and burial and resurrection and on Pentecost morning, the Spirit was given to all flesh. So you and I come to a place where we're living, acting, and moving in the Spirit. As we, be, as we begin to open ourselves up to spiritual thoughts and spiritual happenings, the Spirit of God will come upon us. Now, the Father said, as Jesus and He were one, so are we are one in Christ Jesus. So we've been made righteous, we've been sanctified, we've been washed by the blood, we've been cleansed by the blood, we've been made a new creation, we're full of new wine. You know, I was studying the other day, and, <clears throat> and it was a very interesting statement the Lord says, when, that he could not take a new wine and put in an old wineskin because the wineskin would burst. But he took a new wineskin, made us a new creation. In, in John chapter 3, Jesus has told us that we must be born again. To be born again must, means that we have a rebirth or a new start or a new life in Christ Jesus. In the anointing, so we have this that the Lord is bringing us and keeping us and holding us into the spiritual things of the Lord. What is amazing is a lot of people will be born again and then they will revert back to the past. They will, it says in Galatians that a dog will go back to his vomit and a hog back to his wallow. So many of us have lingered and we've hung around the cross, we've hung around the empty tomb, and we're looking under the law trying to justify the things that happen. Now some people enjoy a familiar spirit or they flagellate or beat themselves up or they're never worthy or they're always unworthy and they can't ever walk into freedom that we have because we have been redeemed from the curse of the past. We are a new creation. Now how do you mean by new creation? This body that I've got. You know, I was studying this morning before we came to the sermon. You know, it was interesting to know that some of the people that I was studying said that because of sin and unrepented sin, man has a problem of living and walking in the things that God wants him to live and walk in here. So what is happening to me and you? We're always under the boundaries or under the, under the bias or under the weight of sin. Over in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, it says, lay aside every encumbrance, every weight of anything that is against you and me and walk in that revelation knowledge that we are a new creation. You know, Jesus is wanting to do a new work in me and you today. He's wanting us to be filled with the Spirit. But when we're so dogmatic and so religious and so locked into the past and traditions that we're unwilling to be willing to listen to the Holy Spirit who's saying, come, 
Come to the table of the Lord. Come and move out of the place you are. Come and walk in the thoughts and intents of, of my heart. Don't be looking around. Don't be trying to follow after somebody. There's not a man on the face of the earth or a woman either that you and I can look up to that will be absolutely perfect. Now in Christ we are perfect, but in the flesh we are not perfect. So you have to understand and set aside those things. Now the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and you what? To walk in the things of the Lord. What is the fruit of the Spirit? That is part of the things of the Lord. Love, joy, gentleness, and peace, and patience, and kindness, and long-suffering. So when you and I are walking in that revelation knowledge that we're a new creation, full of new wine, walking with the fruit of the Spirit, loving people, and loving God, and walking under the power or the dunamis of the Spirit. Now Jesus told the disciples over and over and over, Luke 24, 49, he says, Go and wait in the upper room, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit's come upon you. In John 14, 16, he said, I will pray the Father, and he will send another comforter who will be with you and around you and accomplish you. And then he said in John 14, 20, he says, If you keep my commandments and you love me, he said, I will manifest myself to you. So what is he saying to me and you? He's saying the Lord is that spirit. And where that spirit is, there is complete freedom in the spirit. One of the interesting things that Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, he says, You have been born out of due time, and now you're seated in heavenly places. Well, what is the heavenly places? The heavenly places is realizing that right now, when we get born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, we have been moved from this earth into heavenly realm. The heavenly realm is heavenly places where Christ Jesus rules and reigns. When we begin to, get, begin to realize that the Spirit of God is showing us that the flesh profits little, but the Spirit is the Spirit of life in John 6, 63. So the Spirit of life is upon me and you to show, to be, to walk in the joy, the glory, the smile, the kick in our step, the, the full health, full deliverance from the enemy. But what happens is we do not allow ourselves freedom. Now one thing I've, I've come to understand God is good all the time, and you must realize that He is. If you believe He's the one that is hurting you or causing you harm or causing you to be in the situation you're in, excuse me just a minute, in the situation you're in, the, the situation you're in is greater than your love or greater than your realization or greater than your revelation or the wisdom and the knowledge of who you are in Christ Jesus. So the enemy will come, and he will try to get you to live in past sin. He will try to get you to do the same things you did yesterday. He will try to get you to look and to be what you were two or three years ago. Well, you can't live the past. That water has already gone down the creek, and you can't put it back upstream. You know, there's an old cowboy saying, always drink above the herd. Why do you keep on a drinking below the herd? You know that there's silt, there's trash, there's stuff in the water down there. Why do you want to do that? Why do you want to live in the past? Why do you keep going back to the same doctor that you've been going to or the same church you're going to? And every day you go back and when you leave there, you're no better off than you were. So why are you continuing to do those things? Why don't you ask yourself a question? Are your prayers hindered? Are you praying the same prayer that you've always been praying? And have you not come to fruition? Do you think or imagine or could you think or imagine that maybe you're praying the wrong way or you're living the wrong way? Have you asked and studied in the Word to see what in the New Testament, what you're to be about? If you constantly are going to the Old Covenant and you're constantly under the law, you're always going to be under condemnation because no one and no one and even Paul says, no one can live up to the law. He said, I'm a Pharisee of Pharisees in Philippians 2 and 3. How are you and what are you looking at? And how are you trying to live according to the past? You and I have to move and to be led and to be motivated by the Holy Spirit to live according to what the dictates of the Spirit is today in the present world. We can live triumphantly, victoriously, and abundantly blessed in today's world. You'll hear people say, how are you today? Well, I'm blessed above all measure. Well, are they really? That is a good, good confession piece. But are they really? Follow them around for a little while and see if they really are. Satan will come immediately when you make a stand for the Lord to try to steal the law, or the, excuse me, the Word of God out of you. The Word of God will always take you and elevate you and lift you out of the bondage. But the law, which was in the first early covenant, it will always keep you bound. You will always be trying to be better, but you never quite get there. 
Satan will always try to come and to blind you. And he does it with most gentle aspects of life, just like he did Eve. But the point is, come out of that. Be filled today with the Spirit of God. Be motivated by the Spirit of God. Ask the Lord, what does it mean? Well, go read in Acts chapter 1, verse 4 through 8, where he says, he says, you shall be my witnesses when you, the Holy Spirit comes upon you because you have received power to be my witnesses. Then he said in Act 2, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, said that, said that it was a mic, like a mighty rushing wind. As the wind came, they heard everybody from all over the, all over the known world were there. And they were all speaking a, a same language, a different language, but yet a same language. They each understood each other. And we saw 3,000 people say. And then we see that this is that, what Prophet Joel was said in the last days, I'm going to pour my spirit out on all flesh. So what are you looking at? What is the dictates of your heart? Where is the motivation of your personality? And are you really trying to live a better life? Are you stuck? Well, you may be at the top of your game. You may be the best doctor, the best nurse, the best high-paid banker, the best stock Wall Street broker. You may have everything, the best golfer, the best hunter, whatever, the best. But, but you may be lonely. Your heart is not right. You're, you're disturbed with the lifestyle you're living. If you ask yourself, what is going on in your lifestyle? And could anything be better? What is really causing you and me to live the way that we're living? The Lord is telling me and you, look, I have a better plan for you. The steps of you are ordered, but you have to come and you have to be willing to submit to me the Holy Spirit, the leading of the Spirit. But when you're, let's say that you're the opposite of being on top of your game. Let's say that you're under your game and everything that you're sick and you're afflicted, your back hurts and the doctor's giving you a bad report and the, the x-rays and the MRIs and the CAT scans and the blood tests and everything you've done, your bank account and, and everywhere you go, there's nothing good in your life. What do you look at? Well, let me tell you what the center of all this is. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And the Spirit of the Lord will always tell you the truth. He will always take you to Jesus. He'll always take you to the Word of God. He will always set you free. And everything that you will walk in the Word with will come to fruition. Now, if you walk in the dictates of your heart and the life that you're wanting to do, without it being in the Word and lining up with the Word and agreeing with the Word, it will not come to pass. It will always be opposite of that. So when you're looking and you're trying to think and you're trying to be and you're trying to do, ask yourself, am I in the will of God? Am I doing and I'm living for God this morning? Am I walking in the presence of the Lord? What are you thinking? Let me ask you this. When you're sitting alone in your own diggings and, and you've been working it hard and you went out and you've done everything you know to do, you've got the fences up and you've got the windmills pumping and you've got the cattle all at home and everything is good and you're sitting there kind of kicked back and you're saying, boy, I, this is all right. And you're kind of asking yourself, am I really all right? What is the blessed hope that's in you? You know, when you're on top of the game, that's when you need not to forget the Lord that he is the one that gave you the power to have wealth. But when you're under the game, he's also the one that is there to give you the wealth. Have you realized that it's always God? It's always him. He's always looking and hoping and that you'll turn and come back to him. He's asking you today to turn from that place that you're at. Irregardless of what your status is in society, he's asking you, he says, come and I will change your heart. I will change what's going on in you. I will make you a new creation. I will put new wine in you. I will give you new clothes. I will make, make the old patches go away. And all the things of the past will be washed away and forgotten. Have you come? Have you washed yourself in the blood today? You know, I get tickled at people uh, that you talk to that uh, they're religious. You know, they want to fold their hands and get on their knees and do all the things and pray the same prayers. And yet they're defeated. You know, it's, it's amazing irregardless of who you are, what is going on in your own thoughts? You know, our mind is renewed daily with the Word. Romans 12, 2, you renew your mind daily. It says we're saved by the engrafted Word in James 1. So I'm asking you, have you thought today? Are you really thinking about what the Spirit of the Lord is doing in your life? Are you willing to make a change? Are you willing to look forward? Paul says in Philippians 3, he says, forgetting those things which lie behind and look forward to the upward call. Let me tell you, the things we're looking at here on this earth in Corinthians chapter 6, it says are but momentarily. You're looking at things are but for a moment. 
You know, you once were a young, per good looking person. Now you're older and you're wrinkled and you're white headed and the end of your life is coming on and you're beginning to think, if I accomplished anything, if I laid aside anything for the Lord, if I, what, if, what is the hereafter going to be like? Well, you know, there is a hereafter. There's life, there's death, there's blessings, there's cursings, there's, there's death, there's the grave, there's hell. What are you looking at and where are you want to be? You know, eternity is forever. The moment we're here is but for a moment. The Holy Spirit is bringing you and drawing you and teaching you and leading you this morning to say, I need help. I need to call this pastor. I need to ask for prayer. I need to be saved. I need to get born again, as it talks about in John chapter 3. I need to ask the Lord Jesus that come into my heart. I believe that he hung on that cross just for me. I believe that he was buried and three days later he came out of that empty tomb. And because of that, he gave me eternal life when I receive him as Lord. So we began to see and know what we are about. And so we, we need to move into things and the thoughts and intents of the Lord. So when you begin to do that, you will walk in the power and the dispensation of what he's telling you. What is he telling you today? The Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The liberty that we have is knowing that when the Holy Spirit was given on the day of Pentecost, He came to fill every believer. There were signs following every believer. They spoke with new tongues. They, they prayed for the sick. The Lord raised them up. If snakes bit them, if they drank anything deadly, it did not hurt them. And they were redeemed. And you're going to say, well, the way I read it, all those guys became martyrs. Yeah, they were persecuted because of the cross and because of their belief in Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. You will be persecuted, but you have victory over all that. You have victory beyond that. You have victory greater than anything and everything that they're trying to do to you. So think about it. The Lord is that spirit. Now you can tell by a person how happy they are or how joyful they are or the smile on their face or what they are doing and what when they're in uh, some situation, their reaction to it. Their smile on their face. Can, can you not see that the Lord has given them absolute peace? They are walking in perfect peace. They know exactly where they're headed. They know that in spite of all the situations, everything is going to be okay. I, I was talking to a lady yesterday afternoon who brought a woman to, to the doctor who's going to have cement put in their spine. You know, I thought to myself, this girl knows the Lord, but why isn't she asking the Lord? Why isn't she standing on, on the things that she knows to stand on? Why is she doing what she's doing? Well, you become blinded or so intent that you've got to have help, but you're unwilling to wait upon the Lord and be still long enough to let Him heal your body or cause your body to respond to the Word of God. The Word of God created your body in the beginning. So if it'll create you in the beginning, why won't it heal your body now? Well, I just don't have the faith you do, Brother Bond. No, you do have the faith. Every person has a spirit of faith. Every person has the Holy Spirit who is one of his gifts is the spirit of faith. It, so we have those things. But if you have not the Holy Spirit, you have no liberty. You're walking in the flesh. In Romans 8, we were talking about that earlier in the program. Romans 8 says, if you walk it in the flesh, it will, is a direct opposite of the spirit. It says in Romans 8, 11, it says, as God himself raised up the Lord Jesus and gave him resurrection life, he will also raise you and me up and give us resurrection life. Little do you and I know, but the moment we get born again, we have received resurrection life. When we pass or this body is laid down to ashes and dirt, we take on a new body. So we have resurrection life. But without the spirit, there is no life. You know, I prayed for a young lad this, this week, a, a one and a half year old boy. And they said, well, he was brain dead. He'd been under the water and one thing or the other. And the spirit of the Lord quickened me to say that to call his spirit back into his body. Because without the spirit of the Lord, there is no liberty. There is no life. There is nothing but death. Now, the little boy belongs to the Lord because he's under the age of accountability. So we don't fret that that way of life or what's going to happen to the boy whether he lives or dies he is in God's hand but the spirit of the Lord is saying to me and you as long as there's breath there's life and if there's not breath there's not life and we need to pray and seek God's will whether there's breath or there's not breath we need to walk in the things that God tells us to walk in where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty 
Now, some of you that are watching this program today are walking and have been. Some of your loved ones have died or someone around you has had a tragic accident or things have happened bad. That is a time when you give all these things to the Lord and you put them in His hands and say, Lord, give me the understanding. Give me the explanation. Give me the thoughts. Give me the, the under, where I know exactly how to live and how to proceed. Well, see, that's what the Holy Spirit does. He comforts us. He is with us. He never leaves us. But if we're void of Him, as it talks about in Jude, some people are void of the Spirit of God because they have rejected the Holy Spirit. They believe that He's of the devil. How can the Spirit of the Lord be of the devil? I mean, think about that. Are you saying Satan and the Holy Spirit are one and the same? Are they from the same characteristics? I hardly think so. Maybe you need to study the Word a little bit and get out from under doctrines and denominations and ask yourself, what is the Lord really saying to me and you? Where are you headed with this? Well, I'll tell you where I'm headed with this program right now. I'm telling you by a person that loves you, that Jesus came to love you. He came to die for you. He came to fill you with the Holy Spirit. He came to give you the Spirit to be with you, just like His disciples. He had been with them three and a half years. And He kept telling them over and over and over. He says, I must go. I must be put on a cross. I must die. But I'm going to pray the Father and He's going to give you the Holy Spirit. And Peter said, Oh Lord, I'll never leave you. I'll never do those things. But we know the truth about Peter. He did. And so did the other disciples. But you and I, and just like they did, they needed a comforter. They needed a person to come and to share and to hold and to help and to give them reason to love again and to walk again and to have peace again. They, the Holy Spirit was come to you and me to bring us, to help us, to guide us, to lead us into the promises of God. All the promises of God are yes and amen. But without the Spirit, you're void of that. Now, some teaching here on this earth, and I won't go into any details of the names of people like that, but they don't believe in the Holy Spirit. When you don't believe in the Holy Spirit, you've just denied the things that God set in motion because we are in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. We are not going to be without Him ever. He is here forever and ever to bring people, to guide people. As long as there's people, there's the Holy Spirit is going to be here because Jesus promised that. One of the interesting things I got out of studying this is in John 17. He says, Father, as you and I are one, I pray that you'll bring those who receive the Spirit in to be one with us. So we are one in Christ Jesus as we're one in the Spirit. So what happens to me and you is when we are filled with the Spirit of God, we are led by the Spirit of God, we are directed by the Spirit of God, we have great joy, we have great peace, and there's nothing the enemy can do to change or cause us heartbreak or details of anything that will not walk in perfect wellness. We know that the Lord is there to do that. You're being changed every day from glory to glory, power to power, to situation to situation. The Holy Spirit is changing you, showing you, guiding you from every, everything you're doing, every occurrence in your life every day, from getting up to going to bed. Everything that you're doing, the Spirit of God is in that, leading you and me to that. The Lord is that Spirit in your life. Rest for a moment. Sit back and rest. Go read Psalm 139. It's interesting what, the, what was written there by the psalmist where he says, There is no place I can hide from you, neither the heavens nor the earth. No place, the darkest or the deepest, I can't hide from you. Precious Holy Spirit, I pray that you'll come. You're welcome to come into this area. Come into this, this sermon this morning and overflow into the people that are watching this. Overflow into them that they understand that you're, ha you're wanting them. You're begging, you're, you're pleading. You know, in James... There's an interesting statement. It says the Spirit lusts us to envy. In other words, the Holy Spirit is wanting us to lust after the Lord, to seek after Him with all of our heart, to seek righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, to walk in the power of the Spirit, to go and pray and watch God raise somebody up, or go to pray for a cancer person and watch God heal them, or watch blind eyes open, or cripples being healed, or the good news that we all are free from the things of the past. Oh, the Lord is so good. I just pray that the Spirit would just draw you and give you a smile, a joy. Let it, the joy of the Lord be your strength. Let the joy come into your heart. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. Let the things and the personality of God know that you know that you know everything is going to be okay. Everything you're looking at is but for a moment. The things that of God are eternal. You know, the money on this earth is but for a moment. Who knows what it'll be worth tomorrow? 
Look at what the, the things around you. Look at what's happening. Put your eyes, your thoughts, your heart. Dig into the Word. Go to the book of Acts and Galatians and Corinthians and look at that. You know, I heard a, a pastor friend of mine one time say, you know, the book of Corinthians was for back then and it's not for now. I got news for my brother. It is for now. It's forever because the Word of God will not change. It is now and forever. I pray that the Word will show you. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus, our Lord, told us that we needed to be filled. Go read Matthew 1, verse 35. Go read along in there from 25 to 35 and see what it says. It says, Jesus will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. Well, the Lord is that spirit. And the reason the Lord wanted that, he said, I must go to heaven. I must die and I must go to heaven. In John 16, he says, it's expedient that I go. It's expedient that he had to leave because he was telling that we were going to be convicted of sin, righteousness, and in judgment. So we began, to, we began to slip forward and go forward into the things of God. And so we began to go and to move. And so you get right after it. I want to tell you this as I'm closing to this morning. Get in the Word. Pray and seek the Lord this week. You can all, you know, do these things. I would like to tell you to please subscribe to our daily devotions and our social networks on PastorJerryBond.com. I pray that your heart has been moved and you will help us support the TV ministry to do the things that we've asked, that God has asked us to do to take this simple gospel to the ends of the earth. And so we began to tell you and and plead with you. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Word of God. Let the Holy Spirit come upon you and walk in it. As you, as you live this that next few days, get in the Word and let the Word change you from within. It will make you a new creation. So you and I can see the very glory of God. You know, there's things that are happening. You know, uh, we're moving out. We're, we've handed out over 400,000 CDs. We have been in Peru, we've been in Canada, we've been on mission tour, we've been doing all these things for the kingdom. I pray that you'll help us and see that God is in what we're doing. I pray that he'll open your eyes to the understanding and the revelation of who Jesus is in our life and that our nation needs to repent and turn back. Pray for the leadership of the nation. Pray for the new people that are running for the high office of presidency and other. I pray that you'll subscribe to our daily devotions on the social network at PastorJerryBond.com. And everybody said, Amen.